Hey, great pleasure to welcome to the show today, man, who has written a book about a topic that is uh, kind of growing, I would imagine, or I know it's happening out there. It's called the Virtual Manager, uh, Cutting Edge Solutions for Hiring, Managing, Motivating, and Engaging Mobile Employees. We're joined by a human resources uh, consultant and expert, Kevin Sharon, today by telephone. And uh, Kevin, thanks for being with us. How are you? Good. My pleasure, Doug. Looking forward to it. Great to have a chance to, uh, to talk to you. I read through the book uh, last week, and uh, uh, I'm glad you wrote a book like this because I've had an opportunity opportunity uh, in, uh, in my work uh, uh, career to, to do some virtual work uh, out of a uh, home office, and uh, I, I like it. I think more and more people are liking it, and I guess uh, companies are, are liking it. Is that true? Indeed, it's become a, a very, very big growing trend uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of the big benefits to companies is that they can save a lot of money on real estate costs. And in one example, IBM made the conscious decision to ask 25% of its workforce just to stay home. And that decision alone saved them over $600 million each year. Wow. I know once the Internet became basically uh, instantaneous for the most part. I mean, instead of the old dial-up where you probably couldn't do a lot of uh, remote work, now you can with setting up uh, Skype and all those kind of uh, connections. Uh, unless you really have to see somebody face-to-face, like if you're a doctor, uh, I would say most jobs you can do remotely, can't you? That's exactly right. If there is no need for a direct customer interface, uh, nearly every, every other job is, uh, is a possible job to be done remotely or virtually. Problems, though, that do arise, I've heard people say in companies that I've been in, well, out of sight, out of mind, if you're not around, you know, the management and other people, uh, people tend to forget about you. I think that's changing, but I know you, you address it in the book. Uh, is, is that being overcome, you think? Actually, it's one of the greatest challenges, uh, Doug. Um, transitioning people to work virtually is not an easy task, and for some people, it can be actually quite a drastic shock. Um, from a personal standpoint, uh, those people that are now working remotely, they no longer benefit from the, the day-to-day uh, interaction at the water cooler. They miss out on the, the high fives in the hallways and, hey, let's go chat and have lunch. And that lack of personal uh, personal interaction can leave the virtual employee feeling very separated and isolated, detached and distant. And so if you're a virtual manager, it's especially important for you to acknowledge that challenge and also nurture the relationship so the person doesn't feel that isolation. You talk about uh, managing virtual em- employees and uh, that manager... Uh can't see you directly. I guess you, you, you stress the importance of, of uh, verbal communication, whether it's by phone or internet or a lot of emails that, uh, you know, can kind of make the employee feel more part of the team, but, but that is a challenge, isn't it, for, for a manager? Indeed, and the, the technology it certainly helps. Um, some of the, the vehicles you mentioned before, Skype, and of course the in, uh, internet and the intranet done uh, within the company. But at the same time, uh, one must not forget that we've got to put the, the human back in human capital management. And oftentimes an email is just not going to cut it in, in a live conversation or even a, um, a direct um, interaction where the person comes in once a month to corporate or what have you, or even meets with a coworker at a Starbucks in the, in the area. Uh, that can make them feel much more connected as well. Doesn't it also kind of depend a little bit, Kevin, on the type of work? I mean, from what I do, I you know, do broadcast and writing. I do some technical writing work as well. But it's kind of an individual type of work that you can do. It's a deliverable, so as long as you get it done, hand it in or whatever, that's better. I guess other types of jobs, maybe uh, you, it's better if we have other people around you in the, in the office. Uh, is that still an, an issue? It is, it is. Um, what we find is that uh, when you have an opportunity to uh, create a position that is virtual, you've got to be very, very careful about looking at the job content and making sure that you're not going to run into obstacles uh, where uh, the, the work can't be done effectively. One of the biggest obstacles we find and the biggest mistakes made by companies and or virtual managers is they're just hiring the wrong people for these remote positions. and. By doing so, it could create uh, a trust issue, and what we find is that if we were to advise a manager on, on 
uh, with the questions that should be used to vet through candidates for virtual position, they really fall into three characteristics. They need to be self-starters. Uh, they need to be motivated on their own, and they don't need to be nudged by a manager to get to get the work done. And, and they also have to be people that are can, a proven track record of taking things to the finish line. I, I, I tend to agree with that. I think uh, from my personal perspective and other people, I think they do kind of what I do. Uh, you rather just kind of you know, give them whatever assignment you're given, leave me alone, let me do it. If I have a question, I'll ask you. But I think you have to have that mindset, whereas other people maybe need that uh, kind of nudging along uh, to, to get their job. I don't see people like that that need somebody kind of on their back. So I guess you, you have to kind of weed that out in the beginning, don't you, when you decide if that person can work at home or not. Yeah, that's exactly right, and uh, if the relationship isn't working out, it might be, uh, frankly, it might be the, the manager's fault and that they didn't hire the right person to begin with that, that they could trust, and trust is a key ingredient to a successful virtual relationship, and that's why I dedicated Chapter 2 to, to the, the whole uh, idea that, that one must trust that the virtual employee is getting the job done, and frankly, if they're needing to be micromanaged, then maybe it was a hiring error on the part of the manager. Mm. Well, one of the big issues, of course, with uh, we see gas prices going up, uh, the commuting uh, costs and the commuting time. Uh, obviously, people are going to want to, if they can stay home, if they have a long commute uh, otherwise, uh, that's, that's going to make it even more attractive, I think, to, to employees now. Do you see, Kevin, uh, in the next year to five years to ten years, uh, even more companies maybe just not even bothering you know, having offices anymore, just you work at home? Definitely. Um, right now, we estimate there are 30 million people that work virtually, and, and it's interesting that you bring the gas prices up because this has come up in, in several of the interviews that I've given in the last couple weeks, and not only does the employee have the opportunity to save money on commuting costs, but commuting itself is an extremely stressful experience, and mm -hmm. one of the things we've seen, especially with the younger population, is that they value virtual work as a benefit, much like health insurance. And uh, work schedules as well. I mean, obviously, if you work at home, you don't necessarily have to maybe do an 8 to 5. Uh, you could probably do maybe 11 to 7 or work at night if you like. I guess it kind of depends on the, the industry, but that, that also opens up that possibility or, or working weekends if you have to, right? Absolutely, and we know that uh, work-life flexibility is something that is treasured by some of the younger generation or what might be termed as the millennial population of worker. Well, it's a fascinating topic, and uh, as you said, Kevin, it's just kind of beginning uh, this uh, option of virtual working at home and a virtual manager, kind of a new uh, career title, I guess, in a sense. So uh, you've kind of uh, opened up the door with, with this book to kind of give some good tips uh, on that. It's called The Virtual Manager, Cutting Edge Solutions for Hiring, Managing, Motivating, and Engaging Mobile Employees. And uh, Kevin, uh, do you have a website people can get a hold of you or, or the book? Absolutely. It's www.hrsolutionsinc.com. Great. And the book is uh, published by Career Press, which does a lot of great uh, uh, paperback books that help people uh, with uh, you know, these types of things. And Kevin, really appreciate you taking a few minutes to join us today. As someone who likes doing virtual work, uh, I, enjoy, uh, I enjoyed reading it, and uh, I'm glad uh, more people are doing it. I think it's going to be uh, great. It's kind of a revolution we're going through now, uh, employee and employer-wise, but I think it's a good thing, don't you? Indeed. Indeed, Doug. I really enjoyed it. Thanks so much for having me.